I'm Dirk Elston from the Medical University of South Carolina, and I'm the incoming president of the ASDP, and more importantly, I am a past mentor for the ASDP mentorship program. And I'm here with Brian Hines. Dr. Elston, good to see you. I'm Brian Hines, I'm at the University of California here in San Francisco, and uh, I was a past mentee, um, and I spent a little bit of time at Yale University with uh, Dr. Jennifer McNiff. And so tell me about that experience. What, um, was it a life-changing experience? Was it, in what ways was it good for you? Yeah, I think it was a fantastic experience overall. I think that uh, from the standpoint of uh, a young mentee, um, it was an ability to work with an expert in the field of dermatopathology and explore some interest in the field and uh, work on a, a project uh, for um, an extended period of time. Uh, it started out as just a two-week project, but uh, you know that evolved um, into a longer uh, project and relationship. And um, it wasn't uh, only good just for the field of dermatopathology, but just expanding my clinical interest as well, as I'm a dermatologist uh, like you. And Jen is a wonderful teacher, I imagine would be a, a fantastic mentor to have worked with. How did she approach it with you in terms of planning the time you were going to spend together and planning ahead so you could accomplish your project during the time you spent with her? I think it was helpful that we had touched base beforehand. Um, I had about a year to prepare and so we set aside um, not only what we were planning on doing while I was there but what I was going to be doing before I got there. And so I think that was the key to being able to complete a project within a two-week interval. Excellent. And that's similar to, to what I've done as well, is work with the mentee well ahead of time so that they, otherwise it's hard to complete any kind of a project in, in a two-week span unless you've planned ahead and sort of know what you're doing. And then you have to realize much of the writing and work is going to happen after that. But it gives a much longer relationship than that two-week window. Sure. And I think from the mentee standpoint, um, you know, there are, there are certain challenges, but it helps to be in close communication, and um, email usually works perfectly for that. Um, but I think from the mentor side, it must be difficult, given uh, the busy schedules of many of the academic dermatopathologists, to fit us young mentees into your busy schedule. So oh, how, do you, the, how do you do that? Well, that's the fun stuff. So, um, you know, there's, there's all the work, and we love our work very much. I mean, it's great being a dermatopathologist. It's the old quip, find a job you love and never work again a day in your life. Um, but the, um, being a mentor is like that, too. I mean, that really is what energizes and makes it fun. So you always want to carve out that time. So tell me about the project and what you did with Jen. Yeah, so we worked on uh, MITF, nuclear stain, and we were evaluating um, some samples of sun-damaged skin. And so we took some, uh, some of the patients that we had in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and I brought some slides with me of those, those patients. And uh, so we analyzed MITF expression and compared that to melan A um, in order to characterize the melanocyte density in what was considered normal, uh, chronic sun-damaged skin of the elderly. And, and I know the, uh, you have a similar uh, paper or two on that subject, well, and so we had used well, that. we did, and I'm interested to see what you found. What, what I would guess is that you come up with much higher estimates of, of density if you use MITF, or I'm sorry, if you use melan-A versus MITF, where you'd estimate a somewhat lower density. Is that, that what, that's a, is that what you found? That's very similar to the results that we had. And um, so the interesting uh, point was that, you know, melan-A can lead to overexpression in even normal, uh, what are perceived as normal keratinocytes. And so it's helpful to use that nuclear stain and, and not to succumb to that pitfall. Um, so we, we felt that that was a clean and crisp stain, and now we have obviously SOX-10. Now this was a couple years ago that we had done this project. All, all of which I love dearly. And I still love that, um, I still love my melanase. I, um, you just have to be familiar with your stain. And um, one of my 
fellows who's you know very good with a joke said, well, if you want to overdiagnose everything, you use melanin. If you want to underdiagnose everything, you use MITF or SOX10. And you know, just knowing your stain and knowing where the balance is, I think, is key. So thanks. That is very useful information for all of us in practice. So that's the science that came out of it. What else came out of it in terms of your career, do you think? I think that um, I owe Dr. McNiff a great deal uh, because I think that that experience really was a jump start to um, my career in dermatopathology and um, being uh, interested from a young age, I uh, then was able to um, you know, accept a fellowship at UCSF and so now I'm here in San Francisco in my second year of dermatopathology fellowship and I, I think that uh, the ASDP through the mentorship program, I think, uh, jumpstarts the careers of, of young physicians, and I think it's really key to, to getting off on the right foot. Well, and we do, I mean, we expect big things from you in your career, and one of those things is to pay it forward in terms of mentorship towards others, because we, you know, the oldies are, we're just the stewards of the specialty for the next generation, and you know, you are the next generation that's going to carry the science and the specialty forward, so. Well, you've laid the foundation, and, uh, you know, we uh, owe it to you to carry it forward. So, look forward to doing so. So, from a mentor standpoint, um, what do you think the challenges are in keeping the relationship uh, going and trying to uh, not lose the communication with the mentee? Um, because there is a big interval of time to when you find out, when you actually go Correct. to visit an institution. And so we, um, recent uh, mentee, Justin Bandino, planned his study and we had planned out exactly what we wanted to do. And there's always the question, is it human research that will have to go through an IRB, then all of that paperwork, you know, anything to satisfy the institutional requirements. The, um, the searches so that you have your case material ready, have all that in place. And I'm a big planner, so I want that in, in place well in advance. And then I have to keep good notes because when Justin contacts me, as he said, we're all very busy. I want to say, yeah, now what was our project again? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you want to have your notes to yeah. refer to um, so that um, Everything goes smoothly, and so the mentee knows how you know, it, excited you are about doing this jointly. And then afterwards, um, you've gotten to know someone, and it's great to see where their career goes after that. You, know, you want to see where they're going for fellowship, and beyond that, um, how their career is building and how they're starting to mentor others. And so it's great to, um, to see people all through their career and, and how they progress. I've always said I'm most proud of my two children. That's what I'm most proud of in life. And then after that, it's all my other kids. And all the other kids are the residents, the fellows, the mentees, and it really is great to see them come into their own. And you accrue a very large family in that <laughs> period of time. So very it's, very it's large family. Nice. I won't have to put all of them <laughs> through college, but... Um, yes. Um, it is, and that's the interconnectedness of Derm Path, which is what makes us a great specialty. And I think that you hit on a key point that, that mentorship really isn't just, you know, from the ASDP offering this wonderful scholarship, but it's not just a jun one juncture in time, it's not just one uh, short two week interval. It's something that uh, needs to be worked on, and um, from the mentee standpoint, um, there needs to be a certain amount of organization and uh, you know, just continue to foster that relationship throughout time because it can change over time and it's very dynamic, which is uh, what makes it so fun. So, And I think for the society, it's uh, investment in you know, a, a project and a person over a finite period of time, but it pays dividends to the organization over many, many years by helping people with their, with their careers early and really getting them involved with the society as well because that's, that's what we need. Um, medicine is changing. You may have noticed that. Yes. There are lots of, lots of changes coming down that. the pike 
And we need all hands on board. And we really need the talented to, to share their talents and get involved with the society. And this is a great way for, to catch people early. So I think if you're wondering out there how, how do you apply for such a mentorship award, um, you can go online to the ASDP's website and you can uh, find the mentorship award there. And then uh, you might be surprised because the application process is quite early. So uh, you may not find out where you're going to be uh, with your mentor until um, several weeks later, but the relationship may not start for another year. And so that's part that of, gives you time part to of the design, project. right? Yeah. Part of the design so that you can have that time to organize your thoughts and, and get to know your mentor. And uh, that way when you, when you arrive at your destination, you can uh, you know, get started quickly and um, make progress, so. Well, that's excellent. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate your time, Dr. Elston. And um, good luck with everything you do.